good morning, good afternoon, good evening, um, depending. And ladies and gentlemen, all of our guests from around the world and our speakers, welcome to the 2021 SCO World Forum session titled Innovating Public Service Citizen Government Co-Creation in Asia. My name is Warren Look. I'm the CEO of Good Lab from Hong Kong. It's my pleasure to be here today to be the moderator for this session. Um, next slide, please. And today or tonight, depending on where you are, we are, we are honored to have an amazing lineup of speakers who are some of the most prominent and recognized social innovators from the public sector and the civil society for, of Hong Kong, Singapore, Taiwan, and South Korea. And they are, next slide, Ms. Ada Wong, the executive chair of GitLab from Hong Kong, Emily Ong, the deputy executive director of Design Singapore Council from Singapore, and Sung Kong Han, the founder and CEO of CDOT from Seoul, and finally, Kevin Yang, the founder and, and CEO of 5% Design Action from Taipei. So first of all, thank you so much to our speakers today and tonight for joining us um, for this very important and hopefully very insightful session. But before diving into the panel discussion, I would really like to take this opportunity to quickly introduce my organization, Good Lab. Um, we are a Hong Kong-based not-for-profit think and do tank for social innovation. Our mission is to inspire and foster positive social change through human-centered design and cross-sector collaborations in Hong Kong for our communities. And we put our focus on, in particular, the social and public sectors of Hong Kong, mainly partnering with government agencies and local NGOs to execute various social innovation projects with a substantial element of citizen engagement, which is also the focus of our session for today, in order to co-create different solutions to the most entrenched social issues that we see in our local communities locally. So um, one of our speakers, Ada Wong, uh, is also from Good Lab, and she's gonna talk about Good Lab a little bit more later. So enough about us for now, but what we really want to do is to get to know more about you our audience or members of our audience today or tonight. We have now dozens of people in this um, uh, session today. It's, it's our honor to be running these sessions, but we would really love to know where have you joined us from and why are you interested in this topic? So let's tell us more about it on menti.com, another platform that we're using. Um, so I'd like to ask our members of our audience to uh, pick up your smartphone and scan the QR code on the screen or go to menti.com on your mobile phone uh, and enter the code 8274-6265, 8274-6265. So you can just use your smartphone to scan the QR code as well. And that will bring you to the platform, menti.com, where you will see two questions, one about where you have joined us from and the other one is about why are you interested in this topic? So if you have any issue you know, accessing the platform, do feel free to type in your questions or, you know, your, your issues on, on the chat box. We'll try to kind of help you out uh, as soon as we could. But this should be reasonably simple. And my colleague, my, my event support colleagues right now in the room as well, will be switching the platform, will be sharing the screen from Manti.com as well. Cool. Let's go to Manti.com. And my colleague is uh, projecting it. Wow. Wow. Nice. A lot of you are from the United States. I, I'm sure it's really, really early in the morning right now in the US, probably around eight or even earlier than that. Uh, some of you are from Europe, uh, the UK, Italy, and obviously uh, some of you are from Asia, mainly Hong Kong, Singapore, uh, and some of you from Canada. And even South America, I, I saw Argentina as well, and the UAE. So thank you very much for joining us. And I'm really glad that you, you are very interested in things that are happening in Asia. So we will give it another minute or so for, uh, for our guest to type in your 
kind of the country that you you're from, and then uh, to give us a sense of uh, you know um, the people in the audience today. Wow, it's actually uh, really interesting and and really inspiring to to have this opportunity thanks to Sco Forum for us to actually you know expand our horizon, expand our exposure to you know the world. Uh, of social innovators, change makers, community. So it's really great. Awesome. Wow. So uh, essentially, we, we have audience from all around the world, from all, almost all the continents as well. So let's move on to the next question to get a sense of why are you interested in joining this session today, where we're going to talk about citizen government co creation for public sector innovation in Asia. Why are you interested in this topic? Myself and the speakers would really love to know why are you here? Why are you waking up early to join this? So uh, try to type in your answers in, in menti.com and let us know. Wow. Innovation is needed now more than ever. Definitely, definitely. We, we are doing a lot of stuff in Hong Kong which we're going to tell you more about it, and as well as in other Asian cities. Learn methodologies. So in our session today, we're going to have sharing from our speakers about the actual examples and cases that they have been doing in their respective um, country and cities about public sector innovation. To wish to help, governments in Asia are autocratic. That's partially true. To understand more about the co-creation tools and methods, we're going to hear more about the different examples. Um, and uh, we have some design professor uh, who have obviously a lot of experience in design. How can we leverage that? And what have been the examples in various cities? Um, and uh, obviously, the best practice in the COVID-19 world or the post-COVID-19 world, we're going to hear about from our speakers around what they think will happen, how they see the future would be in terms of citizen government co-creation for public service innovation later on as well. So if our colleague, if my colleague can scroll down a little bit so we can see a little bit more. Um, yeah, uh, to understand what is possible and to research co production at private and public sector. So we're gonna have, obviously, we're gonna focus on the pri uh, public sectors later on, but obviously, you know, the private sector organization have always had a role to play. Awesome, awesome. Wow, so uh, it's really interesting. You, you, you all have a lot of, you know, questions with you when you come in, and hopefully by the end of this session, our speakers with our examples, with our passion, will be able to at least inspire you a little bit more or offering some references for you, regardless of where you are, to you know actually have some helpful case studies for you to kind of actually do something about it in your respective countries and cities around the world as well. Thank you very much. And obviously some of the, uh, I'm sure some of the cities or country representatives today you are probably thinking about how to push forward or foster more you know, co-creation between citizens and government in your country. So we're going to answer that as well later on. And by the way, ladies and gentlemen, we if you have any questions throughout our discussion later on, feel free to type your questions in the chat box that you see on the platform. We're going to have, we, we have dedicated a session later on uh, for Q&A and, and exchange with you all. So it will be really helpful and, and lively and interactive if you can type in your question throughout the discussion. We're going to pick on some of those questions and, and kind of discuss about those as well later. Now, very interestingly, we have a lot of people, you know, coming from different parts of the of, around the globe. Um, I guess we can close the Manti now. Um, but nonetheless, I mean, in this couple of years, over the last couple of years, it would be without a doubt that countries and cities are facing a lot of um, complicated challenges, social challenges, and the difficulty in solving some of them is aggravated by a lot of polarization, misinformation, even false information, or in some places, people's distrust towards institution establishment or even leaders, the traditional leaders 
However, things may not be as gloomy as it seems in, in some parts of Asia. So in this panel, we're going to look at how this may meet our, our, our panelists uh, in the region who are trying very hard to turn that around by fostering more co-creation between citizen and government in the context of designing public services. And the speakers are from different cities on different levels of civil society authority and government intervention. So we probably gonna see some contrast and comparison across these cities as well. But how might we redefine relationship between citizen and government? And what are the key takeaways and challenges in, in an Asian context? So without further ado, we would love to have in the next you know, 20, 30 minutes or so uh, for each of our speakers, straightly in seven minutes uh, to talk about and to share with us about the contextual characteristics and prevailing culture when it comes to citizen government's co-creation in their cities, as well as their hands-on experience of public sector innovation. So now, without further ado, I would like to invite, first of all, Sun Kong from South Korea, from Seoul. May I invite you to uh, tell us more about what's happening in Seoul, please? And may I invite my colleague to show the PowerPoint slide as well? Thank you very much. Over to you, Sun Kung. Uh, thank you, Warren. And uh, hello, everyone. I'm Chang Yong Han, who is uh, founder and CEO of the CDOT. Uh, I'm based in Seoul. And the CDOT is a catalyst organization uh, for social innovation in Asia uh, through the connecting people and organizations um, who want to make society better. And we work with uh, many different sectors, uh, institutions, and uh, organizations. I'm very much uh, pleased to join this session tonight and very looking forward to the discussion later as well. I definitely hope that the, my presentation is help the audience who actually joined this session uh, from all over the world. And also, I would like to appreciate that the effort and also dedication for the last 10 years um, from uh, civic sectors and also governments to make this initiative wonderfully. So, uh, can we move on, next slide? Yes, so I will share the 10 years experience or the experiment of the co-creation in mainly in Seoul. And in this slide, you can see the many diverse experts, uh, experiments and also um, uh, cases of the co-creation. And I don't go through the uh, each by each, but actually this whole city started with a multi-channel uh, for communicating with citizens and then it goes uh, into the more governance structure and also service process, etc. So you can see like a participatory voting system and public-private policy making partnership for the social economy and so and also um, some kind of crime uh, prevention uh, through the environment design, etc. So the co-creation range from the local community level to the to the platform as well. So next slide. Uh, among this lot of uh, initiative and experiment cases, it is not easy to uh, um, it is not easy to select one or two cases to share. But I want to show that the diversity and also wide range of co-creation experiments in Seoul, and also how far it is developed. So. I shared two recent cases, uh, so called the Local Lab and uh, Democracy Soul. So Local Lab uh, is kind of community-based co-creation approach, I would say. It is to help the local residents empowered to diagnose the local needs and problem and find solutions uh, by themselves with local experts and public officials in local authorities. And uh, this, uh, was initiated in 2018 as a pilot project um, by the uh, Seoul Community Support Center, which was established in 2012. And um, based it, the methodology of this local lab is based on design thinking. So it has a four stage, as you can see, diamond model. So it is from the discovery and definition of problem and also solution development. And for the last stage, the local residents uh, make the action plans at the verification stage. So actually the Seoul uh, Community Support Center 
uh, have a goal to reach out the 3% of the whole population in Seoul City, around 300,000 people uh, who can experience community activities by the 2022. So actually it was almost there. And another case on the right side is a democracy. So it is the uh, digital democracy platform where the citizen uh, can take part in the make, making suggestion and decision and actions. And it is also designed to continue the momentum of the citizens. The citizen can establish the institution and also make the policy that directly impact their lives. I look at the statistic uh, from the last year, the visitors to the platform are around 600,000 people and the number of the participants to the uh, different type of the discussion uh, around 97,000 and also 445 proposals were submitted here and then 54 was accepted. So from this uh, kind of 10 years experience and also two cases I shared that, I would like to share the couple of points about the co-creation. The first one is uh, two cases actually is not the one night power project. Um, this is a long process. Um, so, and also along with this long journey, citizen and also government side can be empowered. And based on empowerment, actually the next stage can be developed. Local lab is also can be brought uh, from the kind of 10 years experience of Seoul Community Support Center. The center starts to supporting very small community meetings and also activity of the local residents at the beginning, and then let them help along the how can learn that the community meeting and then create the governance in the local. And through this experience, actually local lab is uh, now can be emerged. And Democracy Seoul is also in the same journey, I would say. So after more than 10 years, experience. Probably you have heard the Oasis of the 10 million imagination and evolving system, etc. So democracy is how it was created. So citizen in this platform is not the passive one to submit the ideas and the wait, but in that um, in this uh, platform and citizen can actively engage and then take the action. And second point is I think a co-creation is a process of deepening the democracy because it is about the distributing the powers and along with this uh, process the people actually uh, try to find a more um, different way of democracy i think in korea there is a many uh, exploration about the direct democracy and citizen democracy etc for the last i want to uh, make clear we need a co-creation for the future especially for the next generation as one way to responding to these questions, I would like to share the project my organization C. worked last year uh, deeply. Sorry, can you move on next slide? Yes, we are living in a, uh, sorry, next slide. Yes, uh, we are living in a very uh, difficult time, I think, uh, like a climate, crisis, a climate uh, crisis and also pandemic, etc. So um, uh, the claim for fundamental transition is very strong everywhere. So CDOT, uh, working with the Seoul Metropolitan Government, and we work with the documented lab, uh, carry out the research and design the future transition campus, where the citizen and innovator across sectors can learn how to co-create the future together and reimagine the future together. And we uh, picked the three uh, main practices, the code the system thinking and future literacy, collective storytelling. I really hope that we see the more space and cases of co-creation for the future in Seoul soon. Um, I'm sure that other speakers will share the more uh, specific practice and experience like uh, trust, the common language, and catalytic, et etc. So I look forward to hear that also. I think that my time is up. <laughs> so thank you so much. Thank you very much, Sung Kung. I, I'm sure you know we all love to know more about the specifics in the things that you talk about. So we can talk about a little bit more about the specifics later on. But next up, uh, may I also invite Emily? Perhaps you can tell us more about what's happening in Singapore right now and what have you been doing in Singapore with Design Singapore Council? Emily, over to you. Okay, can I have my slide? Hello, everyone. Hi, I'm Emily. 
like what our Warren has said, I'm from Singapore, specifically from the Design Singapore Council. I think um, my role is a little different from the rest of the speakers here on the panel because I'm my role is actually a policy maker within the Singapore government. The Design Singapore Council is part of the Economic Development Board of Singapore. So what we do is we are the national agency with a mission to design, develop the design sector to help Singapore use design for innovation and growth and make life better. So that's the little quote that I really love. That's from my prime minister and it's very, very real. You know, he says that really, really design is a core element of our nation building. Singapore is a nation by design because everything that we have today is really made by design. Okay, next slide, please. So in, in tandem or rather in line with our topic today on about co-creation between government and citizen, I thought I want to share this initiative that's developed by the Design Singapore Council. It's called the School of X. Um, I, I think everybody perhaps in the audience have heard of the movie X-Men. That's where we got our inspiration from, right? Because you know, you have this group of superheroes that's coming together with superpowers and to save the earth or rather the planet. This is what we are trying to do at School of X. And then of course, X can also mean experimentation. It can also mean transdisciplinary, multidisciplinary. It can also mean exceptional. So, so this is what the School of X hope to put on the table. And, and to be clear, the School of X is not a physical school. What we are is that we are a real world learning platform whereby we help Singapore citizens coming together right, to build skills so that they can create positive impact for our community through design thinking. So what we do is we get participants, stakeholders from all walks of life, from different backgrounds to solve complex shared problems. Right? And also for them to build future ready capabilities in critical thinking, in decision making, in human centered design. As you could see, the various things that we do in summary for School of X is the real world learning, right? We solve complex problems, we design for everyone. And the School of X actually put in place a, a, a process, an approach whereby we put people through structured mentoring that's facilitated by designers. That is at the end, what we want to do is to foster an appetite for innovation and of course, for sustained impact for the long run. Next slide, please. So what I'm going to do is to share two projects that the School of X have worked on. One is uh, we did this with the Alexandra Hospital and the Ministry of Health Office for Healthcare Transformation. So the challenge statement was essentially, how do we improve the experience for people as they transition from healthcare institutions back into the community? So the participation, participants we put together are really healthcare professionals from the hospital, the members of the public community partners, even designers and public officers. Very importantly, we involve the public service as part of all this co-designing, co-creation process, because it's very important that we align our policies, our programs together with the needs of the citizens. So what we do is we explore ideas, how to create models, right, where we get perhaps um, ideas such as single team within a hospital, and what would their post-discharge care look like while they're integrated back into the community. So very interestingly, at the end of the workshop, we, we run a little poll. We, we look at how, how have the mindset shifted. It was very heartening that we, we see that the participants' confidence, you know, it, it raised their confidence to tackle complex challenges. And they have a lot more confidence in working in cross-collaboration teams, and then a lot more confidence to try new ideas and solutions to address everyday challenges. Next, please. So the next um, uh, example is really, you know, something that, that really, you know, brightened up my day whenever I talk about it, you know, that we work with this uh, social service agency called, for, called Center for Fathering in Singapore. So they have this movement called Dads for Life. You know, mothers get all the attention in the world, but dads are also very important, right? How they can be inspirational figures to our children. So it's very interesting that, you know, because of the pandemic, right, and because they are a nonprofit, though they are quite hard hit by the pandemic. So what we did was we worked with them, you know, in coming up with a challenge statement as how might we improve their financial resilience, right, and their outreach. And the idea is that it doesn't stop 
with Dads for Life or Center for Fathering, some of this approach can also be applied to the rest of the social service sector. So that's the plan, right? So we got the participants, the board members, the staff, the volunteers coming together and, and we brainstorm, you know, we co-create ideas on how we can basically help to increase the awareness, the engagement for and with fathers, right? And also how do we, of course, improve the financial sustainability of the center. So some of these uh, ideas we came up is rather, to me is rather quite cute, lah. you know, it, it's, it's actually quite heartening. So, you know, we always get care kits, right, in the hospital for mothers, but we did one for the dads, you know, for new fathers this time around. And then, of course, we have membership program for fathers, you know, they have exper experiential interaction with the kids. And then very interesting, we have the Brave Men's Club, you know, to bring all the fathers together in the community. And then we create the bonding, a supporting system for all these dads. So, so I hope that through this um, uh, case studies as well as what we do in, in the School of X, we're given an idea what we are trying to do, you know, in Singapore, where the government is taking the lead to foster all this social innovation, but we bring in our people as part of the journey. All right, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Emily. Um, your, your last point is, is spot on. What we have just heard from Sung Kung and Emily from you know, South Korea and Singapore is that we, we have seen a strong drive determined intention from the government to actually facilitate um, a lot of co-creations with the citizens. And so we heard about participatory budgeting. And obviously from Emily, we heard about um, this initiative about fathering as well. But what about, you know, in Taiwan and in Hong Kong, where there has been known for having a more mature, relatively more mature civil society there. So up next, I would like to invite Kelvin um, to share with us and tell us more about what's happening in Taiwan. What's the status in Taiwan right now in terms of cities and, and government's co-creation? Kevin, over to you. All right. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Kevin from 5% Design Action. 5% uh, uh, Design Action is also a uh, social design platform. Uh, we locate uh, in Taipei City in Taiwan. Uh, thank you for the Emily's um, sharing because uh, as a father has three kids, <laughs> it definitely have to design for the dad uh, life. <laughs> I think that's so great. Um, Five percent design action. Actually, um, we locate in Taiwan, and then today I'm going to uh, have a very brief sharing um, to you to um, to share some of our insight, our learning in Taiwan to talking about the, the co-creation between government and the citizens. Um, actually, 5% Design Action is a uh, social enterprise in Taiwan. And right now, we, uh, why we call 5%, which we call, uh, we encourage the, uh, everyone, including the designers and then the, the professions to donate not the, only the money, but also their professions and the time to social challenges. And right now we do have more than 10,000 different kinds of uh, professions, uh, professional volunteers on our platform. And then we recruit them based on different kinds of social challenge and then uh, SDGs goals. Um, uh, of course, we have a uh, more than three and 50 different uh, social uh, organizations, including public sector, to uh, provide different kinds of uh, public sector uh, challenges to them. So uh, it's kind of uh, of a um, social design uh, platform and then open the communication and then and also the actions. Okay, please next to uh, next slide. Uh, the first example i'm going to share to all of you is a in taiwan we do have a um, open uh, co-creation platform uh, called join uh, j-o-i-n uh, the, on the join platform every citizen uh, basically you can launch and then uh, provide your idea uh, on the platform uh, and then uh, in two months if you can uh, 
encourage more than 5,000 people to support your, uh, propose, your proposal, uh, the executive uh, department in Taiwan government, they have to arrange the uh, open conversation uh, meeting and then, and then uh, invite you to come to uh, have a direct um, conversation uh, with different stakeholders uh, inside the government. So I think there's a very uh, good platform. Um, and I think it's most uh, important for the government because their first successful uh, example is uh, redesign for the tax payment system <laughs> because it's so uh, successful. So, uh, so many public sectors uh, representatives, they so, uh, support this uh, platform to uh, keep challenge, to keep provide different kinds of uh, challenge or encourage the citizen to uh, share their idea. Okay, next slide. So right now I do have some takeaway um, uh, thoughts and insight or learning from uh, in from Taiwan. Uh, you can see we do have a different kinds of approach. One is button up, uh, which built by uh, government. Uh, and also very interesting, uh, we kind of have a top down approach, but uh, built by a NGO or social enterprise like us, 5% design action. So we kind of use different kind of approach to uh, targeting the different kinds of social challenge and then also gathering uh, multidisciplinary resources and, and, and talent together. And then we uh, kind of use uh, design thinking and service design methodology to uh, facilitate or coach them to uh, do many design research and uh, design actions. And then also we uh, try to transfer our uh, lesson learned and also the outcomes to the different uh, organization, including government and uh, also the providers of uh, public sectors. Okay, and final one. So what we learning is, if you can um, have a platform to connect uh, between online to offline, and also you can invite the right key persons uh, uh, earlier uh, during the whole design uh, process, I think that would be much better because uh, you will gather the different empathy and the different perspective from different um, stakeholders. And then um, you can have different uh, co-creation parts and the technique to help them to uh, co-seeing the problem and then co-learning from each other, but in a very equal uh, uh, position. And then we can start uh, talking about the co-creation. So I don't think the co-creation will appear uh, in the beginning, but uh, you have to have a mindset to open the conversation and then use the digital tools to help the different kinds of uh, situation to gather uh, as much as information you need. So I think um, in Taiwan, we, uh, we learn a lot, but we're still on the process. Yeah, that is my uh, uh, sharing for you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Kevin. Um, you, the platform is uh, very powerful. I, I think some of our our um, audience in the uh, in the members of the audience also mentioned that in the chat box. But I think it is something that you know a lot of countries. If, if you want to kind of do more citizen government cooperation, digitalization is a way forward. And probably this is a topic or an angle that we can go into discuss a little bit more later on in our exchange. But uh, last but not least, um, Ada, uh, you're from Hong Kong. Uh, I'm just wondering, do you see any similarities or differences you know, from your experience um, you know, working in Hong Kong, pushing through public sector innovation in Hong Kong? May I invite you to share a little bit more about your work as well, please? Um, right, thank you. 
Hello, everyone. Um, Hong Kong is actually quite different, I think, from um, Seoul and from Singapore and from Taiwan. In a sense that I think in Hong Kong, to put it in a bit of a context, um, you know, Hong Kong policy making is still quite top down. So it is not, uh, you know, um, the government's, um, you know, formal procedures to do deep engagement with the community. Obviously, some token um, consultation will be done, uh, but um, it is hard to find space uh, for citizens to play a bigger role in innovating public services. So, um, you know, Good Lab, as Warren has already told you, Good Lab is actually a very small civil society organization. We are an intermediary. Um, we advocate tri sector collaboration uh, through social innovation. But, you know, where could we find the opportunity to be the bridge between the government and the people? Um, I think we got our first break from actually doing um, a lot of training workshops and design thinking workshops uh, with the um, Civil Service uh, Training and Development Institute. Um, so through that, um, we got um, uh, you know a lot of uh, progressive civil servants uh, interested. And um, for example, you can see in the photos um, uh, that um, you know you see people walking in a nulla. In, in a sewage facility. And so this is actually an infrastructural project um, by the drainage services department and the Good Lab um, has done a series of a community engagement, listening to the people's views as how to improve the Nala, both from a functional point of view and also from you know it uh, being a, an enhanced leisure and public space. So next slide, please. Um, so, Yes, and as I've said, you know, we first of all, you know, we are a small civil society organization and we do need to get um, the public officials interested to have to get them on board. So apart from um, apart from, you know, doing all these uh, training, uh, we have also um, uh, been able to um, work with um, other sectors, uh, cross sectors. Uh, through uh, different uh, workshops. So for, for example, uh, we also work with the biggest charity in Hong Kong, the Hong Kong Jockey Cup Charities Trust, to try to um, help uh, traditional youth centers uh, to come up with interesting models uh, for innovation. Because as you know, in this day and age, uh, the youth, they've got their internet world and nobody would like to go into a traditional youth center. But does, does it mean that you know, they have to be closed? You know, on the other hand, they, they don't need to be closed. So, so through our work uh, in different sectors, I think we have to continually engage uh, both government and um, a lot of uh, social institutes uh, players. Next slide, please. Now, we're not alone in doing that. Um, in order to um, ensure that our city creates a, a stronger can-do mindset, we have to have other allies and partners. Um, in this slide, you see um, Matt Social Lab. Matt is uh, short for Make a Difference Institute, another uh, social um, organization in Hong Kong. And they do something called the Social Lab. Um, in which um, they throw a lab question at a government department, invite the government department to work with a group of young people um, to understand the pain points of that policy and also to identify solutions together in a series of co-creation workshops and using the design thinking and the ethnographic approach. Um, so recently, uh, the Matt Social Lab um, has started a local tourism lab uh, where, as you as we all know, during lockdowns we can't go anywhere, we can't fly. So you know, local tourism seems to be thriving, but that is a kind of local tourism that does not respect rural life. Um, you know, giving it a lot of rubbish, and then at the end of the day, um, the villagers get terribly upset at all the people swarming their villages. So we are now co-creating with different government departments to see what kind of policies there need to be uh, to have more thoughtful experiences for both the tourists and the villagers alike. Um, then, um, you know, obviously this Matt Social Lab has done other projects. At the moment, uh, um, they would like to continue uh, with, uh, let's say, Healthy Street Lab to make sure that the streets are less polluted. And also um, there is another lab to make library books um, better curated. So my final slide. Yes. 
Now, um, obviously, we are very much um, aware of the challenges ahead. I think um, you um, you are from all over the world, and you know that um, Hong Kong has been facing lots of challenges lately um, in uh, the social innovation sphere. Uh, we have got many many stakeholders, um, uh, including you know a lot of very um, progressive uh, nonprofits, and we have a lot of service designers and architects and and whatnot, and a lot of uh, people doing uh, different things, but. You know, at the end of the day, um, the government um, is still, you know, we're still a half-baked democracy. And um, how do we ensure that um, government uh, does and will be willing to engage citizens more in co-creation and not just, um, you know, pay lip service to the consultation process? So I think what we do is uh, we never give up. We are, you know, we would like to find examples and inspirations from our good friends in, in Asia, um, Emily Ong, you know, Design Council Singapore. I think Hong Kong government looks up to uh, Singapore government. And so we hope that uh, the School of X could also happen in Hong Kong as well. And um, uh, in Korea, we have learned about participatory, participatory budgeting. And I know that some small groups in Hong Kong have also started um, a very small initiative on um, getting uh, citizens interested to talk about the budget in their own community. So things like that do add up, and I do believe that uh, every small action counts uh, to ensure that um, you know we can co-create a better public service with the government. So I look forward to more discussions with you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Andrea. Thanks for the inspiring summary as well. Um, but um, just to kind of really you know uh, express my gratitude to all the speakers for sharing with us the the latest situation in their cities or countries about citizen government co-creation we have heard like ada suggested from sung kung and emily about you know a lot of their governments is driving uh, various initiatives with the citizens whereas we have heard from kevin about digitalization uh, and its implications in co-creation between citizens and governments and finally, Ada shared with us their lab-based approach in Hong Kong, as well as the intention of civil service to take on training uh, to learn more about how to engage with their citizens to design public services. So thank you very much to our speakers for your sharing. I'm sure you know, members of our audience would love to learn more about uh, you know, the things that you, you're doing and, and do, do them in their respective countries as well. Now, to kind of get, dive into a little bit more of the specifics, I'd like to kind of begin our actual panel exchange. And my very first question would be, I, I'd like to actually ask Emily and Kevin first after you know, hearing your, uh, uh, your, your sharing. You know, Singapore is, is a city state with, I would say, a comparatively big government in driving a lot of policy making. Uh, in contrast to Taiwan or Taipei, where, like I said earlier, there is a renowned uh, civil society which is very um, diverse and very mature in a way as well as you have already suggested. But I'm wondering, what, what are the, you know, in these two different situations, what are the critical success factors to foster, you know, more effective citizen government co-creation in your respective cities i'd love to kind of hear more from you about that what are the critical success factors shall we uh have emily would you like to uh share a little bit more first well i i guess the whole journey has also been a learning point for us um we have come very far actually in, in because i've been in the public service for the last 18 years so i could also share my journey and I first started out when we were doing policies, it's really a very linear process. You know, I was just writing paper out of like the ivory tower. So that was really like quite real. But I think we have progressed over the years whereby we make a conscious effort to engage the citizens, to engage people and talk to them to understand where we are in terms of their issues so that we can align our policies to their needs. I think that's very important. And that has been something that we are building up over the years. So what you saw in School of X is just one aspect. There is in the Prime Minister's office, or what we call the Public Service Division, actually has a transformation office and an innovation lab. And that's where we embed the 
design thinking methodology or even the mindset in the whole public service right there's about 100 almost 150,000 of us so so essentially this is a mindset we are trying to shift i think that's important as we policy makers to understand what does it mean having the empathy I, and then the other part is the trust is very real you know the trust between the government and the citizen i was just sharing quite candidly with you you know when we first met was that whenever we have any activities you know when a government says oh we're going to do this we will get people to participate because i think in singapore there's a certain level of trust between the constituents and the citizens and the government so i think that is important in order for us to drive so that's why when i mentioned that we take the lead but we also bring them along with us on the journey and it's very important we listen to the ground yeah so even politically we have shifted quite a bit over the last few years our political landscape has changed quite a bit even as we as we talk yeah yes. with the younger generation definitely i what i've heard from you is that you know there, there's a strong obviously leadership perspective around you know driving this in in the country but you also mentioned another keyword or hashtag which is trust we're going to come back to trust later on because you know in in other places in asia there there's a different perception about that as well um thank you very much emily you know kevin in in taiwan you know um how is the government behaving in terms of providing the enabling conditions for, for that sort of co-creation to happen? And how is the civil society, which you are part of, responding to that? What's the yeah. critical success factor there? Yeah, I think in Taiwan, um, basically a very super uh, free free society. I mean, uh, it's all, it uh, leads to chaos. So I think the every public sector uh, want to have a, a very, or the civic uh, society, the different kinds of NPO or NGO or social enterprise. Uh, when we're talking about the co-creation, it's based on, we, we were talking about uh, more about uh, evidence-based design. So when you think, when you think uh, this is a very crucial uh, social problem, sometimes you have to have a systematic way to uh, provide a useful data or evidence for different stakeholders. So I think uh, when we use a uh, very powerful uh, digital uh, platform, it's not uh, tell you you can launch every kind of um, uh, problem without uh, provide the evidence as well. And I think that's the first one. And the second one, I think uh, when we're talking about the co-creation between government and the citizens, we have to talk about the value. What kind of the vision, the value um, in the future, we all agree to um, go forward to the direction. So I think um, when we're talking about the uh, co-creation right now, we will talking more about the value co-creation or vision co-creation together. So we won't uh, sell in the final result to the government or government should not uh, sell in the final decisions to the public. I think they have a, they must have a very open conversation and then uh, learning from each other and seeing the, the crucial or important data or evidence together. So I think, I think that will be the very strong uh, foundation of, uh, uh, for the co-creation and finally I, I i i agree the um the insight from uh emily i think the if you can be very humble and then and then to to different kinds of social issue i think that is the only way to build the trust between government and the citizens yeah it's my opinion thank you very much kevin you, you raise a very interesting point about you know, Taiwan is that uh, you mentioned about not just involving the citizens kind of towards the end of the process about certain policy making or public service design, you involve them from the very start to co-create the vision with them. I think that's a very interesting point because 
you know, um, in, in Hong Kong, for example, it, it's not quite happening yet, which I'm sure Edo can add on to that later. But having them involved earlier is is quite key. You know, the sharing from from Kevin and, and Emily also, you know, reminds me of what's happening in Hong Kong, obviously, but also also in Seoul. Ada and Sung Kung, in terms of, you know, Seoul and Hong Kong, what, what do you see as the top challenge to innovate public service through citizen government co-creations? Um, because I, I'm sure, you know, for example, in Seoul or in South Korea, over the past 10 years, the Seoul Metropolitan Government has been trying to embed, you know, citizen engagement in pretty much as part of the system to innovate policy making. Whereas in Hong Kong, we have seen an emergence of a lot of community led initiatives to help with um, public services. So how do you see and what do you see as a top challenge in your respective cities to achieve more of co-creation in that sense? Ada, would you like to uh, offer your insights first? Okay, certainly, Warren. Um, I think the biggest challenge is to find a government official who can be your champion. Um, I guess um, I guess you all face a uh, similar challenge wherever you are. Um, I, I think you know the government is huge, and there are people who are skeptical of change, and there are people who embrace change. And and for me, um, I you know perhaps uh, because I I have been an elected politician. For a number of years, and I have met um, you know nice pol nice uh, government officials who are willing to try something very different, and they do trust uh, an intermediary like the Good Lab, so they they are willing to try. And obviously, they are very small projects that um, that uh, we can pitch to do. But at least you know, it's a small step, and I do think that every small step counts. But you know, having that champion is very important. But when that champion champion is promoted to another position, or you know, he or she is simply transferred out to another department, and then you know, the dynamics uh, will change um, quite drastically. So um, you might ask, uh, you know, when a certain co-creation relationship depends on individuals, um, surely it won't last. Um, I guess um, you know it is always very challenging to um, to actually try to instill um, the government and you know the uh, the people's wishes and the, and the people's thoughts, uh, um, you know, um, within government's ranks. And so I do believe that the design thinking process and a more bottom up and a more human centric approach um, has its attractions. And also, I think our government also supports. Uh, you know, a more design thinking and user oriented approach, although they are actually still new to the process and they, you know, being very risk averse civil, civil servants, sometimes they are a little bit nervous in, in trying something new. But nevertheless, I do think that, um, you know, um, you know, processes like design thinking will be useful in the sense like, first of all, I mean, if if there is a, a divergent of views, then you know for sure we can test a few prototypes to see which ones are better, and and then uh, perhaps uh, you know we can uh, uh, try out or maybe have some piloting money uh, for the prototype that um, you know has the biggest consensus. So 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 I guess that's um, you know that is a very tricky, and that will be um, uh, the challenges ahead in in particular. That uh, you know, we don't really have um, a representative government that reflects the people's views. So we do need the civil society being very, very um, proactive in telling the government, you know, what our views are. So over to Song Kyung. Song Kyung, um, you know, Ada mentioned about government champions, and I know that you know there are a number of initiatives and policies that you have been receiving views from the you know from the public. So that means a lot of government champions there. Is is that true? <laughs> how how does it work in in Seoul? Do you have a lot of government champions driving this, or do you have any other challenges? Um, um, I think it is the previous mayor is the one of the biggest cha uh, champions. So it was more easier for start to start the initiative of co-creation in every areas. I think. But definitely, uh, every time we need uh, some more like a 
champions uh, like uh, Ada Wang mentioned. Uh, yeah, and but um, um, I would mention that top talent probably um, uh, another part how you could um, because we had a ten years long experience, so sometimes you have to go beyond the next stage. You have to go into the next stage, and then you feel like you stuck in in certain point. So you are satisfied with the outcome at certain point, but you cannot see the more new citizen coming in, and also the public sector is public officer quite. Um, friendly to the new initiative, the city, civil society suggested, but somehow they are a little bit step back and they are need, really don't need to deep dive into the whole the process. So I think the biggest challenge for if we are looking back to the 10 years and how you could make some momentum to go beyond uh, your current stage. So it is more like, a, I think, a challenge to everyone involved in the process, not only for the government or the citizen or the intermediary, but everybody looking at the how we can go beyond uh, our um, current situation. So I think that's the um, current biggest challenge, I think. That's I don't know. <laughs> a very interesting point. You, you talk about, you know, going beyond to the next stage. Question to you and the other panelists as well. To you, what what is the what is the next stage? What is the future in Seoul or South Korea around citizen government cooperation? You you all have done a lot of work in the last ten years. What's next for you in Seoul? Yes, I um, like I mentioned at my presentation, uh, Seoul City and also civil society had some more ex experimenting how we can make another pathway to go to another democracy. So uh, we are more like representing democratic uh, system, right? Especially in Korea, I would say. <laughs> and, uh, but uh, the citizen wants to involve in it more directly in the policy process. Actually, uh, the citizens have already experienced raise the candle to uh, change the government. In, in central government. So the citizens know how they can raise their rights and also they want to be involved in it. And also they want to involve directly in some points, I think. So um, I think the next stage is two things. First one is how we can uh, test it a different way of the democracy in our system uh, within the co-creative way. And second part is we are really facing climate crisis so um, to tackle this really global and also systematic and complex problem, how we can share the value, um, as the Kevin mentioned, together. So government looking at just only uh, five years or sometimes 10 years, but citizens have to live forever, I mean, for their whole life, right? So they're looking at their next generation and also they're looking at their rest of the life. And so they need a new uh, service, new uh, way of initiative, but actually um, just a little bit of the people, just a small number of the people understand this climate crisis, right. and then they try to tackle that point. So yeah. I think that the thing is how we can make some space to have some share the value together sure. for this future. Hmm. Especially in, in, I was reading up the news, obviously, so has a new mayor. Uh, so you know, he might steer things differently as well. So that's uh, to be confirmed. Let, let's see what happens. But, you know, you, you mentioned a lot of interesting concept there about the future. And I, I'm quite keen to kind of understand from Kevin and Emily as well. You know, um, you know, you, you both of you have demonstrated and tell us a lot of good example. And to you, what what's the future? What's the ideal picture of citizen government co-creation for Singapore and, and Taiwan going forward? Um, Obviously, in Singapore, for example, Emily, you talk about a lot of uh, the driver coming from the government. Is that going to continue going forward? Do you see that coming, Emily? If you ask me, please don't quote me. But, oh, never mind. <laughs> so I, don't, I don't represent the government here. If, if it personally, if you ask me, I hope that there are more ground up 
efforts. I mean, there's only so much that the government can do and can read. And to be honest, after a while, it becomes, I, I think there's a sense of reliance, if you ask me very frankly, because the thinking will always come from the government. That means everybody will just wait for the government to do something. So if you ask me personally, I would feel that, you know, I would really love to see whether there'll be more efforts on the ground to drive some of this thing. And then, you know, that means rather than we, because we are always the one telling people that these are the challenges, work on it. But I was super fascinated when Kevin talked about that joint platform. And I, I immediately, I went back to my staff. It's like, hey, can we do something like that? Because honestly, we always feel that we are, we are somebody, the government knows everything, which is not true, right? So the thing is, if, when we can crowdsource, we can hear from the ground. And, and the thing is, that means they are able to tell us that things that we may not know. That means our blind spots. Yeah, so I think that will be a very powerful effort if we are able to converge. That means where we are, we can still lead and the trust they know that we will basically get them somewhere right so but on the ground they will tell us there are issues that you overlook for example we want to work on this we are really passionate about this can you help us yeah i think that will be what i i envision that we, we could work towards and and you'll be a, you'll be a very very good future if that indeed happens i i think personally for singapore Definitely. I, I think, you know, personally speaking, I, I think citizens can definitely tell you, tell you what, what they need and what they what they want. So I, I think that's very important. And and obviously, Kevin, you know, in Taiwan, you showed us the very powerful platform that I'm sure has gone through a lot of, you know, what quoting ADA, a lot of prototyping and testing. Um, is this sort of testing and prototyping effort what you see going to happen in the future of you know, in, in Taiwan or Taipei in terms of citizen government cooperation, or there's something more than that? Would you like to share a little bit more about your perspective and anticipation? Yeah, um, in Taiwan, I, I think uh, even from our perspective, we're still learning from uh, today and then yesterday, or even uh, we just can not see very long term because right now the uh, change so fast. Uh, so in Taiwan, we do have a uh, uh, mechanism called Sandbox for innovation. So uh, we will have a very small area to uh, or amount of uh, the, the citizen or people to uh, co-create a new service with government. And then we uh, kind of go through the whole uh, design process and then on the ground to to, to see how to delivering and then diffusion and then uh, do many kinds of um, data collection uh, from different phases. So I think uh, right now um, design kind of become uh, design and then prototyping is kind of become a very crucial and then very key uh, element when we're talking about the co-creation between uh, uh, government and the citizens, because we we do learn from uh, learn from each other, and then we uh, because in Taiwan we do have a very strong insight or different city uh, uh, positive uh, yeah positive competition between different cities. So many mayors and then many um, um, private sectors they 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 just want to be better, but. Uh, I think right now it still has a uh, challenge from different kinds of perspectives, but I think they kind of um, know a one way is to open the design process. So they uh, invite the different kinds of stakeholders, including the business part, the, the tech, uh, technical uh, research institute, or even the MPO or NGO. So I think um, in Taiwan, we kind of have very uh, dynamic and then uh, multidisciplinary uh, part uh, to talking about the co-creation. So I think in the future, uh, I think the the rotation will or will will be faster, and then maybe um, the many uh, 
useful data or information can be um, can be uh, kind of um, do better through digital tools or platform. So I think uh, that's just uh, my learning from uh, Taiwan side. Yeah, thank you very much. Very much, Kevin. We look forward to hearing more about new forms based on data. You know, in in the kind of in the future of Taiwan's co-creation between citizens and governments. Now, before I go into the next question, which is which will be directed to Ada, I'd like to invite our members of the audience. Uh, we're going to go into our sort of Q&A session very shortly. So I've already seen some questions in the chat box. But if you want to ask an exchange with our panelists, this is a time now. Type in your questions uh, in the next one or two minutes, and we'll come back to that later on. And my next question is to Ada. Ada mentioned about government champions and, and trust, which is kind of a, an overarching theme that we have all discussed upon. Um, I'm sure, you know, listening to other panelists, uh, you probably have resonation as well. But in Hong Kong, there, you know, being part of Hong Kong, there's been a noticeable um, social divide. And, and it's not difficult to sense a level of mistrust from certain group of you know citizens in Hong Kong towards the Hong Kong government. In this particular situation, how do you see the you know the future of citizen government cooperation in Hong Kong out in the fourth years? And is there anything that you know we can leverage the experiences from other cities or countries that we have heard about? Uh, right, Warren. Um, I noticed that um, you know in our beginning, um, menti.com, um, many of you come from the U.S., uh, Canada, U.K., and Europe. I would say that uh, polarization of societies is not um, unique in Hong Kong. I guess it's happening in the U.S., it's happening in the U.K. Uh, people have very, very strong views and you know polarized views and. Um, um, families argue with each other. If you have a family who is uh, blue or who's red, uh, well, it doesn't really matter the color in Hong Kong, it is blue and yellow. And so imagine you have a blue parents and a yellow um, children, um, you probably can't have a quiet dinner. Uh, having said that, um, you know, what's the way out? I, I would say that uh, perhaps the post COVID world offers um, um, conversations. Uh, because uh, we need to uh, rebuild our society, we really need to enter into what you know a lot of people call the Great Reset. Um, a lot is happening. Um, I'm personally very um, concerned about how education is going. For example, um, that is you know that is a part of the big social innovation um, uh, arena. Um, blended learning is here to stay. Uh, but um, we have seen many inequalities during um, COVID times uh, for the grassroots families. They can't even have access to Wi-Fi and therefore, you know, children can't really learn at home while, um, you know, middle class families are, are much better off. So, um, you know, we, we can focus on um, uh, issues and problems um, that would really bring more consensus, um, you know, between the blues and the yellows or the blues and the reds or whatever, you know, whatever color, um, to agree on, on, you know, certain very, very important issues. For example, you know, how should we work in the future? How should we educate our children in the future? And, you know, how should our cities be more resilient? And how should we uh, put more emphasis on public health in Hong Kong? We have more health centers now and in the districts, but how could they be operated in a better way so that um, we understand um, and we can be well prepared when the next pandemic comes. So these are all very, very big issues um, in post COVID days. And perhaps uh, we can start with where well, actually just one of them is enough uh, to get the two sides talking. And um, I don't underestimate the difficulty, but perhaps um, you know we would like to hear from the audience as well as to you know your take um, on this very difficult question, Warren. Very much. Um, yeah, th thanks for sharing the insights. Um, I think um, our audience has actually input uh, several questions and statements, and one of them is from Gaudian. Uh, it's, it's a long question, but essentially the gist is you know the experience of positive change needs to be built bottom up and stakeholders need to understand their impact, not only 
to, to understand that it is participation, their participation has led to good results. What do you think? I think that's, I, I would like to add to that question actually. How, you know, we have been doing various activities and, and initiatives in, in the respective cities. How do you communicate back to the citizens and tell them that, you know, their participation is worthwhile such that they can continue working with the government? Um, does any of our panelists have, have any experience or, or perspective to share on this? Maybe I can, uh, I, I, Kevin, I, I was uh, sorry for <laughs> picking on you, but you know, the, the platform that you mentioned about, obviously a lot of people can contribute to that platform and decis certain decisions might have been made, but how does, that, how does it work in terms of you know, letting people know that their views are of value to actual policy making? How does it work in terms of the process? How do we see the impact? Yeah, um, I think the platform, uh, the join platform in Taiwan, I think the, in the very first, uh, when it's launched, I mean, it's very small one group know the really, the, the, the function of the platform and then um, thought uh, if we can uh, use the platform to um, to promote different kind of uh, public service. I think we don't have the experience. So I think it's also, it's always from a very small, but very uh, insightful action. So um, in Taiwan, we do uh, many small action to uh, invite the different stakeholders, including the uh, representatives from uh, government and also the citizens to do many uh, research together or talking together or even hang out together because sometimes they don't they just don't have the vision of uh, each other so they just see what they want to see so uh, I think we do have uh, we, we 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 input different kinds of uh, events or uh, even online or offline to uh, encourage them or encourage different party to uh, to uh, 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 have a very constructive dialogue or conversation with each other, but based on uh, evidence, data, and also if you don't have you don't. Uh, agree with each other, and then we take action together. So I think it's the only way to uh, promote uh, the uh, tools, even uh, the different kinds of uh, co-creation tools to the citizens or different stakeholders. Kevin, you, you mentioned a great point around, you know, having the tool and platform is one thing, but also having, you know, the people and the citizens having that sort of readiness to contribute, to have so-called constructive dialogues or conversation is is also really important right. on the soft side. And that leads me to, to my next question, actually to, to Sun Kung in your experience in Korea, because obviously you, uh, Korea has been doing that, Seoul has been doing that in the past 10 years with various channels. Do you think, you know, um, there is a huge progress in terms of having greater readiness of the people to participate, is there a change in the mindset that they can actually contribute to policy making? And so, um, yes, I think, and especially um, I mentioned democracy, so right, mm. and then there was a digital platform, but it was not the first uh, digital platform uh, to um, listen to the citizens. Actually, more than ten years ago, there was a another we we already started the online platform to hear about the citizens voices but at the time it wasn't like more like a one-way channel so the just the citizen uh submit their ideas and the wait and then the government in in government the public officer stretched out to show that the, how many ideas can be accepted and why some other ideas cannot be accepted right but uh, now the digital also uh, through this uh, democracy whole platform, citizens actually have a many uh, can go through the many different type of discussion uh, opportunity, and so through that definitely some of them accepted in the policy. But through this uh, process, the citizen can understand how the policy making process uh, can work. 
And then through this discussion opportunity, they could meet the other citizens who are interested in the same issues. So they could actually take action together or they could start some kind of action groups, etc. So in this way, uh, actually the government offered many different channels of the action or um, the channel to the other ways. And then uh, citizen can, uh, citizen can, how to say, um, find a better way what they want to do to tackle that uh, problem, I think. Um, that's an example from, from, from So. And looking at the chat box, I guess this might be my, my last question to ask um, based on what um, Kyra has asked uh, to this panel. Um, she mentioned that she's curious about the experience of the panelists to date in regards to diversity of participants engaged in the design process. Are the participants fairly representative in the usual design process or was there a particular group of people always willing to participate whereas there might be certain group of populations who might not be interested at all? Um, what's your view on that? Do you have any experience to share, panelists, on this? Uh, Warren, very quickly, uh, yeah. I, we've just got one point. I, I think, you know, um, we we need to have a group of uh, very engaged individuals who come up with the initial ideas, but then the next phase of prototyping and testing is important to reach out to all the stakeholders. So, um, for example, in Hong Kong, you know, um, another good lab, uh, we, we get um, a small group of people to co-create uh, the process, uh, but we do reach out to the community. Uh, whether they're older folks or whether they're younger ones, um, we hope to get a fairly uh, representative um, uh, and diverse, um, you know, um, group of people, and so that we understand the views uh, of the whole spectrum and not just a small part of it. And I do believe that um, um, this is uh, this makes good uh, sense uh, to all kinds of um, co-creation processes. Yeah, um, Emily, do you do you have anything to add? No, I, I completely agree mm -hmm. with Ada. Like we, we definitely will need the drivers and the champions in the beginning. But mm -hmm. as we, we go through the prototyping process, it needs to involve the larger population. So what we do last time, we, we tend to be a lot more targeted. That means you curate. <laughs> That's the word used. You curate the people that you want to talk to. So I think what the School of X has done is they open up which means that whenever there's projects, right, we just basically upload it into, you know, a certain platform and we just get people, you know, whoever is interested, you just participate. So it, means it doesn't matter what is it, you're older, older, you're younger, or, you know, whatever, as long as you're interested in that challenge, just come in to do that. Yeah. I think we are progressively trying to do that. Definitely. And, and that makes me bring to my last point here is that, you know, Kevin mentioned a lot about digitalization. Maybe that's, kind of the, the future for government citizen co-creation because that would enable more people to get engaged just with your smartphone uh, rather than having to be physically somewhere uh, uh, in, in a lot of sense. So so maybe that's something that we can all as civil society representatives or members of our audience could think about uh, a little bit more. Um, we, we also have a number of questions. We, we're going to capture those questions and maybe I can share those questions with our panelists afterwards and, and see whether we have any responses. And apologies to our members of our audience. We may not be able to get through to all the questions tonight. But um, it's been an absolutely fascinating and insightful discussions that we have had uh, tonight or today. Um, it's, uh, it's really insightful and I personally learned a lot and I'm sure you know members of our audience have have learned a lot from the current situation and the latest status in various cities in Asia as well and the various stories examples that we have heard from our panelists uh, will be very useful case studies for ourselves when we think about citizen government co-creation in the future so uh, once again I'd like to you know express my gratitude thank you so much to Emily Ada Kevin and Sun Kung and obviously uh, the team, the logistics team supporting this particular session as well from SCO and from my team. Um, I hope everyone has enjoyed this particular session as much as I do. And uh, we do hope to or feel free to get in touch um, um, later on as well. And uh, 
thank you very much and uh, hope to see you again soon and enjoy the rest of the SCO World Forum. Thank you very much. Have a good day or have a good night, everybody.